Right now to our big story for you at 630, the monsoon aftermath. Flagstaff hammered by storms, flash flooding, sweeping through some neighborhoods. We've brought you so many live reports over the last few days as these communities try to recover from the monsoon aftermath. And tonight, our Nicole Grigg and photojournalist Danny Bavaro, who were there when the storms came through, give us an intimate look at what happens when disaster strikes. This is the third warning now that we've gotten just since the rain has started coming down. Uh, here it comes. It starts slowly. Water's going to breach on the corner. It's to the very top. But before we continue on that devastating toll, we want to show you why we were in Flagstaff on that day as we try to document nearly every second we could as one community continues to see flash flooding. ABC 15 was following FEMA as they did a pre damage assessment from flooding that happened just last month in Flagstaff. We're in our first event. Yeah. Okay. This is the spruce wash. It's where the floodwaters accumulate after rain hits a museum fire burn scar. FEMA is here to look and see if there was enough damage to the infrastructure to qualify for federal assistance. My photographer and I would break away from the FEMA tour just before lunchtime. Letting it just channel is not a good idea. To hear from the people most affected by the flash flooding. This is the best that we can do right now. Anissa Doton shows us what she has to do to get home each day. Tens of thousands of sandbags have been in place across this area since 2019. We need answers. You know, we this this is no way to live. It, it's not it's not sustainable. As we were doing this interview, the storm started to roll in. We watch and we wait and we hope that it doesn't flood, but it's just a matter of time. In just minutes after we finished our interview. If you guys are so wanting to move the car, but stick around and yeah. maybe get some footage if it does come through, you're welcome to stay. That was right before we started getting emergency alerts. This is the third warning now that we've gotten just since the rain has started oh, coming down. Okay. The cameras are back. We would watch from the very beginning as water begins to fill the street before becoming a river within minutes. What's going through your mind right now? It just, it's terrifying. It happens. This is the fourth time that this has come through, and every time is worse. We rush home to try to man pumps and rebuild walls where the water's breaching. It just, it's terrifying, and it's going to happen again and again and again until something is done. For 90 long minutes. And as the rain stopped, so did the water, leaving behind devastation. This is the second time now Kurt Draws is cleaning up floodwaters. You know, the house is worth zero. So. This was your life. But. There's, <clears throat> sorry, there's many homes. I'm not the only one. Kim Kaler is just one of many looking for answers from city and county officials. You guys seeing it from like start to finish um, was really important because you have a, a really amazing perspective now going forward. This isn't going to stop. This isn't gonna stop because they're still having meetings and, and meeting and talking in the next two weeks, there is no plan still. We will do this every time it rains. As evening crept in, we saw so many stacking sandbags all over again. Let's go to the next pallet, next pallet. We would then wake up to those in the Sunnyside neighborhood the next day. I mean, other than the mud being three or four inches high in the area, it was a you can see it's a nice house. There are so many people impacted and nearly every single person we spoke with choked up with emotion, feeling helpless. I just got done 
I just got done fixing it up. And had renters come next week. Done. Uh, I wish I could find somebody to blame. Who am I supposed to blame? Many have a lot of questions for city and county officials on when will there be a solution that's not this. I got the chance to ask Mayor Paul Deasy about why is there not a clear mitigation plan moving forward? It's frustrating. It is. And um, I mean, it, it, it does come down to the Arizona Constitution in a lot of regards because we can't develop private property and use public dollars for it. Um, we're, you know, definitely needing to be digging out channels in the areas that we do have control over. As for people like Steve. I mean, I'm willing to take money out of my pocket and build this house up higher and make it affordable housing for people to come live in. You know, they need that in the city, I understand. But until they fix whatever's causing this, why? Why bother? With photojournalist Danny Bavaro, I'm Nicole Grigg, ABC 15, Arizona. I was texting with Danny and Nicole after their series of stories there, um, and plain and simple, they replied, these people need help. Yeah. The I emotional exhaustion yes. from doing this over and For safety over again. and your home and your yeah. livelihood. I mean, everything right there. Yeah. And there. if you've ever filled a sandbag or moved a sandbag, oh. it is work. Yeah. So the city is working to set up a meeting with impacted homeowners. FEMA is also assessing the damage to public infrastructure as a result of last month's flood.